Hi, this is Paul Beckman from DSP Concepts and welcome to Audio Weaver Training. This first video introduces you to basic concepts behind Audio Weaver Designer and is a starting point if you want to learn how to effectively use the tool. We'll begin by looking at the high level architecture. There are three components. From left to right we have first the designer GUI. This is a graphical drag and drop design environment and it is where you do most of your work. If you're a MATLAB user, then you can take advantage of the optional MATLAB API for additional features like automation and testing. In the middle is a server. The server is a Windows application and it does two things. First, it handles real-time processing on the PC. The server interfaces to your sound card and allows you to design systems completely on the PC. Second, the server also connects to an external piece of hardware called the target through a connection we call the tuning interface. The tuning interface can be UART, USB, SPI, or even Ethernet. Designer talks to the server through a socket interface and sends text commands called AudioWeaver script. The server either processes the messages locally or sends them on to the target over the tuning interface. The text messages are converted to binary by the server when using the tuning interface. During normal use, designer, the server, and the target are in constant back and forth communication. There are two versions of AudioWeaver Designer available. The standard version provides the graphical interface. It supports real-time parameter changes called tuning and also includes all of our modules. The standard version supports native PC mode, which means you can run processing directly on the PC without a connected hardware target. The standard version is also able to connect and tune external hardware targets as well. The standard version supports real-time MIPS and memory profiling. And finally, the standard version is full featured and sufficient for most users. On the right hand side, you see the pro version. The pro version is for the advanced user and requires a MATLAB license. It has all the features of the standard edition, plus you can leverage MATLAB for coefficient calculation and general automation. You can run regression tests and test individual modules or complete systems. The pro version supports script-based system design. And finally, the pro version is required if you want to write your own modules using the custom module SDK. Let's start AudioWeaver Designer and look at the main window. The window is divided into three components. In the middle is the canvas. This is where you drag and drop blocks and connect them together. On the left side is the module browser. This is where you find modules and drag them into your design. And on the top, you have standard menu items and toolbar buttons. The window shows a default AudioWeaver system. Yours will look similar, but may differ in the number of input and output channels. Audio comes in on the left side at the system input pin. In this case, the audio has two channels, a block size of 32 samples, and a sample rate of 48 kilohertz. Audio arrives as FRAC32 samples, which are essentially integers. The audio is then converted to floating point, and finally, the stereo audio stream is deinterleaved into separate left and right channels. On the right side, we do the opposite. We convert from mono to stereo, convert back to FRAC32, and then send the audio to the output sound card. Here's what the default system looks like when I'm connected to a hardware target. In this case, it's the STM32H747 discovery board. You have to refer to the documentation for your board, but this system has eight inputs and four outputs. From the documentation, the eight inputs are configured as follows. The first two are USB in, next two are A to D in, and the last four are microphones. And on the output side, the first two go to the DAC, and the last two are USB audio back to the PC. We're now gonna build a basic system in AudioWeaver and run it in real time. I'm gonna start by adding a delay. I'm gonna get a millisecond delay, connect it into the left channel, and then no delay in the right channel. I'm also gonna configure my delay to have up to a thousand milliseconds of delay. I'm running on the PC, so memory is not an issue. After the delay, we convert back to stereo. And now I'm going to search for a scaler. And I'm going to get a general purpose scaler. 
I'm also going to add a filter. I can type into the search window and search for modules. I'm going to add a second order filter. This is a general biquad with design equations. I'm going to get a mute module. It's allow me to turn the audio on and off. And for visualization, I'm going to get a meter module. That way we can look at signal levels. And I'm also going to get a sync display. This is an oscilloscope that we can look at and view intermediate signals. So now I'm all done. I'm going to hit the run button here. This builds and runs the system. And on the PC, when we're running, by default it uses an MP3 file as input. So the piano music you're hearing is the default audio weaver file that gets played. I'm not going to open inspectors by double clicking. The meter has an inspector and the sync module as well. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to change the delay time in the left channel. And now you can easily hear a delay between the left and right channels. Let's turn that off. I can change gains. I can make it quieter or louder. Second order filter is a general uh, filter with designers. I'm going to tell it to be a second order Butterworth filter. It's a low pass filter and I can tune the cutoff frequency of the filter. I can mute and unmute and so forth. And all my changes happen in real time and I get immediate feedback whenever I make a change. Let's go back to design mode and make a few more changes. I'm going to go to the input pin and I'm going to change the block size from 32 to 96 samples and then I can just hit the run button again and in a couple seconds it'll build the system and we're going to be running again and we hear audio. Everything happens same as before. Real-time tuning. And I'm going to stop the system going to close my inspectors and so far we've been running all the audio processing on the PC. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to the server and change connection. I have an external piece of hardware connected here which is a STM32 H747 discovery board. Connect it over USB, make the change, the server sees it and now I'll come back and just build and run the system as before. What it'll do now is it's going to send the design down to the target over USB and now we're running in real time. Now we don't hear any audio yet because the input audio here is two channels of USB audio. So what I'm going to do is go to Audacity. I have the piano music loaded. I'm going to play it out the STM32 device. Play it. And so now we hear audio again. So everything works as before. I can open my inspectors. I can make real time tuning. And you can hear all the changes. I can look at level meters. I can look at waveforms. And all this information is read back from the target in real time. Move sliders change filter cutoffs. What also happens when I'm connected to a target is I can get profiling information. So this system takes about 1.5, 1.6% of the uh, processor when it's running. So this is the aggregate overall information in terms of CPU and memory usage. And now I can also go to the tools menu and get a detailed block by block profile. So this will tell me exactly how many clock cycles each module takes and how much memory is required for each one. So this detailed information is important when you're optimizing your system. Let's talk a little bit more about the differences between design mode and tuning mode. Design mode is where you build your system. You drag out modules, you change connections, you change wire information like the block size. You can also change module names and arguments like the size of the delay. You can make parameter changes 
and also change the module status. That's making it active, bypass, muted, and so forth. Tuning mode, on the other hand, is when you're running in real time. You can't make any changes to your block diagram, but you can make parameter changes, you can change your module status, plus tuning mode has the added feature that it does MIPS and memory profiling. I also want to highlight a few buttons on the toolbar that we've been using in the demo. First of all, there's the build button that basically sends a design to the target, starts audio processing. There's the halt button, takes us back from tuning mode back to design mode. And over here, we have the refresh target info button. This does two things. Okay, first, if you accidentally close the server, you should press this button and it'll relaunch the server and connect to the target. The other thing is if you change the target information, pressing this button causes the designer to read back all the list of modules from the target and it updates the module list on the left side so that it matches what's available on the target. 